Sikhism is a monotheistic religion and hence, believes that God is one, and prevails in everything, as symbolized by the symbol Ik Ankar one all-pervading spirit. The fundamental belief of Sikhism is that God exists, indescribable yet knowable and perceivable to anyone who surrenders his egoism and loves the Almighty. The Sikh gurus have described God in numerous ways in their hymns included in the Guru Granth Sahib, the holy scripture of Sikhism, but the oneness of the deity is consistently emphasized throughout. God is described in the Mool Mantar lit, the prime utterance, the first passage in the Guru Granth Sahib. Sati Namu Karada Puraku Nirabau Niraviru Akala Marathi Ajuni Seba Gura Prasadi. Ikk Oankar Sat I Nam U Karada Purak U Nirabayu Niravar U Akala Marat I Ajuni Sabhan G Gur A Prasad I. There is but one all pervading spirit, and it is called the truth, it exists in all creation, and it has no fear, it does not hate, and it is timeless, universal, and self existent. You will come to know it through the grace of the Guru. SGGS. PG1. Shri Guru Granth Sahib. General conceptions. Monotheism. Sikhism is strictly monotheistic and believes that there is only one God. Guru Nanak prefixed the numeral. I K. One to the syllable Ankar stress the idea of God's oneness, that the Creator, Preserver, and Destroyer is one. Sikh thought begins with the One Almighty and then universalising Him, coming down to the cosmic reality of all-pervading Ankar. Eku pita ekasa ke hama barika tu mera gura hai. Ek u pita ekas ke ham barak. The One God is the Father of all. We are His children. Topic. Priority monism Sikhism complies with the concept of priority monism, a viewpoint that all existing things go back to a source that is distinct from them. It is the belief that all what our senses comprehend is illusion, God is the sole reality. Forms being subject to time, shall pass away. God's reality alone is eternal and abiding. The thought is such that Atma soul is born from and a reflection of Paramatma supreme soul, and would again merge into it just as water merges back into the water. Ju yala mahi jalu i katana jio jal mahi jal a katana As water comes to blend with water Tiu jati sagi jati samana thayo jati sang jath samana His light blends into the light. God and soul are identical in the same way as fire and its sparks, fundamentally same as is stated in Guru Granth, Adam me Ram, Ram me Adam, which means, the ultimate eternal reality resides in the soul and the soul is contained in him. As from one stream, millions of waves arise and yet the waves, made of water, again become water, in the same way all souls have sprung from the universal being and would blend again into it. Topic. Pantheism Another philosophy of Sikhism is the concept of pantheism which says that every being is identical to divinity. It focuses on the subject of a non-anthropomorphic concept of God, to the extent that one can interpret God as the universe itself. Sikh thought holds a pantheistic tone when it discusses the immanence of God Sagan, which says that the whole universe is an abode of the all-pervasive Lord. However, Sikhism does not hold the concept of pantheism fully as it understands God to be both, transcendent and immanent at the same time. Sikh philosophy fuses the concepts of theism and pantheism as to the belief that God exists in his creation to a theistic level, that is the one upon whom everything depends, the ultimate preserver. It can be deduced that Sikhism agrees with pantheistic belief only to the extent that universe can be considered as divine, never understating the transcendence of God which deems the Creator as above his creation. Topic. Specific conceptions Topic. Great architect Sikh philosophy believes that the one God is the great architect of universe. He alone is the creator, sustainer, and destroyer, ek Ankar. God is Karta Purak, the creator being. He created the spatial-temporal universe from his own self, universe as his own emanation. 
Guru Aryan advocates true as he and true as his creation because all has emanated from God himself SGGSPG 294 Before creation God existed all alone as nirgun in a state of sun samadhi deep meditation as says Guru Nanak There was darkness for countless years There was neither earth nor sky there was only his will There was neither day nor night neither sun nor moon he God was in deep meditation. There was nothing except himself. Then, God willed and created the universe, and diffused himself into the nature as Sargon. Whenever God desires, he merges back into his timeless and formless self. Guru Gobind Singh calls this process of creation and dissolution as Udkark from Sanskrit Utkarshana and Akarik from Sanskrit Akarsana, respectively. Whenever you, O Creator, cause Udkark increase, expansion, the creation assumes the boundless body, whenever you affect Akark attraction, contraction, all corporeal existence merges in you." Banati Chaupai. This process of creation and dissolution has been repeated God alone knows for how many times. A passage in Sukmani by Guru Aryan visualizes the infinite field of creation thus, millions are the minds of life, millions the spheres. Millions are the regions above, millions the regions below. Millions are the species taking birth. By diverse means does he spread himself. Again and again did he expand himself thus. But he ever remains the one Ekankar. Countless creatures of various kinds come out of him and are absorbed back. None can know the limit of his being. He, the Lord, O Nanak, is all in all himself. Topic. Creation It is believed in Sikh that the universe was created by a single word of the God. The transcendent God expressed himself in Nam and Sabad that created the world. Nam and Sabad are the creative and dynamic immanence of God. Kita Pasa Eko Kavao Kita Pasao Iiko Kavao you created the vast expanse of the universe with one word. Tisa te ho laka dariao this te ho lak dariao. Hundreds of thousands of rivers began to flow. Topic: When was universe created? Sikh philosophy enunciates the belief that the limits of time and space are known only to God. Answers to the questions of when did the universe came into existence? or how big this universe is are beyond human understanding and the best course as guru nanak proclaims is to admit a sense of wonderfulness or vismad since the featureless void was in ceaseless existence as to the time of creation guru nanak in jap u sahib recites that what was that time and what was that moment what was that day and what was that date what was that season and what was that month when the universe was created the Pandits, the religious scholars, cannot find that time, even if it is written in the Puranas. That time is not known to the Qazis, who study the Quran. The day and the date are not known to the Yogis, nor is the month or the season. The Creator who created this creation only He Himself knows. <laughs> Attributes <laughs> Existence As stated in Mool Mantar, God exists as a Juni, beyond incarnations, formless. And Sabhan Sanskrit Svayambu, self-existent. The primal creator himself had no creator. He simply is, has ever been and shall ever be by himself. Purak added to Karta in the Mool Mantar is the Punjabi form of Sanskrit Purusa, which literally means, besides man, male or person. The primeval man is the sole and original source of the universe, the personal and animating principle, the supreme being or soul of the universe." Purak in Mool Mantar is, therefore, none other than God the Creator. Eternalness God, as stated in Guru Granth Sahib, is Akal Marat, the eternal being, he is beyond time and ever the same. Sabhan G. Another attribute to God means that no one else but God created himself. He is, shall be, was not born, and shall not die, never created and hence, shall never be destroyed. 
The phrase, ad i sac, true in the primal beginning, in the Mool Mantar proves the notion of the eternalness of God in Sikhism. Topic. Transcendence and immanence Sikhism advocates a panentheistic tone when it enunciates the belief that God is both transcendent and immanent, or nirgun and sargon, as stated in the Sikh terminology, at the same time. God created the universe and permeates both within and without. Transcendence and immanence are two aspects of the same single supreme reality. The reality is immanent in his entire creation, but the creation as a whole fails to contain God fully. Saraguna Niraguna Nirakara Suna Samadhi Api Saragan Niragan Nirankar Sun Samadhi Aap He possesses all qualities, he transcends all qualities. He is the formless Lord. He himself is in primal Samadhi. The Almighty, Himself, is the one ultimate, transcendent reality, nirguna near plus guna equals without attributes, ever-existent, boundless, formless, immutable, all by Himself, and unknowable in His entirety. When it pleases God, He becomes sarguna Sanskrit saguna equals with attributes and manifests Himself in creation. He becomes immanent in his created universe, which is his own emanation, an aspect of himself. God remains distinct from his creation, while being all pervasive. Topic: <inaudible> Omnipotence. God himself is the creator and the cause, the doer and the deed. Sikh thought is strictly monotheistic and believes that this universe is creation of God. Its origins are in God, it operates under the command of God hukum, and its end is in God. God is the omnipotent being, the sole cause of creation, preservation, and destruction. He consults none in creating and demolishing, giving and taking but does all things himself. The Nurb How lit. Fearless Almighty does not fear anyone and exercises his unquestionable will. Topic. Omnibenevolence He is kind and merciful, the omni-benevolent Lord. The bestower of all things, apart from Him, there is no other giver. He is also a great pardoner, pardoning all our sins, He bestows virtue on the repenting souls and adds blessedness on the striving virtuous. The Almighty sustains His creation compassionately and benevolently. In Guru Granth, God is called as Kareem. Merciful, the complacent Lord who, in His compassion, blesses the miserable with His nadar graceful vision. The nirvair lit, without enmity, God does not hate anyone and glances his merciful vision on every being, indifferently. The Lord is kind and compassionate to all beings and creatures, his protecting hand is over all. SGGS. PG 300 Topic. Gender According to Sikhism, God has no gender. Mool Mantar describes God as being a Juni, lit, not in any incarnations, which implies that God is not bound to any physical forms. This concludes, the all-pervading Lord is genderless. Suna Midala Iku Jogi Bays Nari Na Puraku Kahahu Ko Kays Tribhavana Jati Rehi Leva Lai Suri Nara Natha Se Saranai Sun Mandal Ik Yogi Bays. Nar Na Purak Kahahu Ko Kays. Tribhavan Jati Rehi Liv Lae. Sir Nar Nath Sash Saranaye The yogi, the primal lord, sits in the realm of absolute stillness state free of mind's wanderings or fern, since God is neither male nor female, how can anyone describe him? The three worlds center their attention on his light. The godly beings and the yogic masters seek the sanctuary of this true lord. However, the Guru Granth consistently refers to God as He and Father. But this is because the Granth is written in North Indian Indo-Aryan languages mixture of Punjabi and dialects of Hindi which have no neutral gender. English translation of the teachings eliminate any gender specifications. From further insights into the Sikh philosophy, it can be deduced that God is, sometimes, referred to as the husband to the soul brides. Also, God is considered to be our father, mother, and companion. Topic. Names for God Sikhism believes in monotheism and hence, has no specific names for God. However, God has been called by many attributive names action-related names, Kirtan Nam SGGS. 
PG 1083, or Karam Nam Grant, Yap Sahib in Sikh literature, picked from Indian and Semitic traditions, he is called in terms of human relations as our father, mother, brother, companion, friend, lover, beloved, and husband. Other names, expressive of his supremacy are Thakur, Prabhu lit. God, Swami, Shah lit. King, Patsha lit. Respected King, Sahib, Sain Lord, Master. God has also been referred to, in Sikh literature, as names given to him in other religions such as Ram, Narayan, Govind, Gopal, Allah, Kuda, Karim, Rahim, Kadir etc. Other attributive names include Nirankar formless, Niranjan without sin, Data or Dater lit. The Giver, Karta or Kartar lit. The Doer, Dayal compassionate, Cripple benevolent and many more. Names peculiar to Sikhism, for God are Nam lit, name, Shabad word, and Vahiguru wondrous master. While Nam and Shabad are mystical terms standing for the divine manifestation, Vahiguru is a phrase expressing awe, wonder, and ecstatic joy of the worshipper as he comprehends the greatness and grandeur of the Lord and his creation. <laughs> Beliefs <laughs> Reincarnation. The center belief of Sikh thought is the soul would reincarnate in this universe unless it attains the state of mukti liberation, which is to be achieved through the grace of God. In its corporeal attire, the soul passes through cycles of transmigration. Through divine grace, it can merge back into the cosmic soul paramatma and escape the throes of birth and death again and again. Revelation The Mool Mantar ends with Gurparsad I, lit, by God's grace, which expresses the belief of Sikh thought that God would be revealed to the soul through Guru's grace. In Sikh theology Guru appears in three different but allied connotations, viz. God, the ten Sikh Gurus, and the Gur Shabad or Guru's utterances as preserved in the Guru Granth Sahib. Of God's grace, Guru's instruction and guidance and the scriptural Shabad Sanskrit Sabda, literally word, the first is the most important, because, as nothing happens without God's will or pleasure, His grace is essential to making a person inclined towards a desire and search for union with Him. Blessing us with His grace, the kind and compassionate all-powerful Lord comes to dwell within the mind and body, sggs. pg 49. Knowledge of the ultimate reality is not a matter for reason, it comes by revelation of the ultimate reality through nadar grace and by anubhava mystical experience. Says Guru Nanak, Buddhipatha na pai bahu chaturai bai malai mani bane which translates to, He is not accessible through intellect, or through mere scholarship or cleverness at argument, he is met, when he pleases, through devotion. SGGS, 436. Topic. Gnosticism Gnosticism is the belief that the divine spark is trapped within the spirit and can be liberated by the gnosis or knowledge of this divinity. Sikh spirituality is centered to the theme of understanding and experiencing God, and eventually becoming one with Him. Human incarnation, as advocated by Guru Granth Sahib, is a special privilege and an opportunity for the realization of the ultimate destiny of spirit, union with God, as Guru Aryan says, Of all the eight million and four hundred thousand species, God conferred superiority on man. Another verse form the scripture praises the human body as a temple. Kao Deva Kayao Devala Kayao Jagama Jati Kaya Dava Kayao Deval Kayao Jangam Jathi. Within the body, the Divine Lord is embodied. The body is the temple, the place of pilgrimage, and the pilgrim. Kayao dupa dipa nebeda kayao pujo pati, kayao dh hoop deep nebeda kayao pujo pathi. One. Within the body are incense, lamps and offerings. Within the body are the flower offerings. One. Sikhism thus sees life as an opportunity to understand God as well as to discover the divinity which lies in each individual. God is perceived to reside in the human body and can be found by being a gurmukh lit. Facing guru and merging self into the hukam or divine command. Though, as mentioned in Guru Granth, full understanding of God is beyond human beings, Guru Nanak described God as not wholly unknowable and stressed that by becoming gurmukh, one should find the divinity residing in his own self. <laughs> Mysticism 
Mysticism is the experience of becoming one with the Almighty, which Guru Nanak states as Sak Khand realm of truth, where the soul is immersed completely in the divine will. The primal belief of Sikhism is of the spirit to get merged into the divinity. As Guru Granth proclaims human incarnation as a chance to meet God and enter into the mystic reality, Bhai Parapati Manuka Dahoria Bhai Parapati Manuka Dahoria Ba Parapat Manak Dahor. This human body has been given to you. Gobinda Malana ki iha teri baria Gobinda Malana ki iha teri baria Gobind Malan ki ih teri bar. This is your chance to meet the Lord of the Universe. It is a devoted meditation Simran that enables a sort of communication between the infinite and finite human consciousness. There is, chiefly, the remembrance of God through the recitation of His name and surrendering of the self to God's presence often metaphorized as surrendering self to the Lord's feet. The ultimate destination of a Sikh is to lose his egoism completely in the love of the Lord and finally merge into the Almighty Creator. Topic. Practices Topic. Five vices Those, who follow the instincts of their mind, under the influence of five vices, lust, anger, greed, attachment and pride, and ego would wander miserably in the cycle of birth and rebirth. Calm lust Crowed anger Ahankar ego L-O-B-H greed Mo attachment Topic. Five Ks Guru Gobind Singh initiated the practice of Amrit Chakna, the baptizing ceremony of Sikhs as Khalsa, in April 1699. This distinctive identity is represented by five K Akars. Every Amrithari baptized Sikh has to don Kesh hair, Kanga comb, Karha steel bracelet, Kirpan miniature sword, Kachara shorts. Topic. Three duties Nam Japna chanting the name Karat Karna doing good deeds Van Chakna donating self-earnings See also Conceptions of God God Existence of God Names of God Yap Sahib Wahe Guru Bibliography Sabadarth Shri Guru Granth Sair, 1959 Jodh Singh, Bai, Gurmati Nirnaya. Amritsar, 1932 Pritam Singh, ed., Sikh Falsaf Drup Rekla. Amritsar, 1975 Sher Singh, The Philosophy of Sikhism. Lahore, 1944 Kapur Singh, Parasaraprasna. Amritsar, 1989 References <references>